this video we're going to take a look at creating the table legs so I'm going to start here in in our floor plan view and because I want to work, once again work from reference planes I'm just gonna go ahead here and I want to just hide the geometry that we've created here so that we can make sure that we're selecting in fact our reference planes so now that I have this geometry selected I'm just gonna come down here and just hide this element so that I can focus here on reference planes. I'm going to come back up to my create tab and come down to datum reference panels. I'm going to come inside and I'm just going to go ahead and begin to draft what's going to set up our table legs. So I'm going to need a reference plane in each of these directions. And you'll see I'm making them a little bit shorter than the reference planes that we actually used for the table ends. Unfortunately, Revit does not allow us to create different layers for our reference planes. So we kind of begin to use length just to communicate to ourselves. You can see that I have a little bit shorter length on the inset reference planes that I'm going to use for these table leg insertion points. And now that I have them, I'm going to go ahead and convert them into work planes. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to name it over here, right legs. And I'm going to select this one and I'm going to name it left legs. We could go ahead and name these reference planes as well but for the simple table that we're creating converting just these two to work planes will be sufficient but I do want to emphasize the naming you want the naming to be meaningful to the family you're creating and it's important that I name this right in this one left legs it actually correlates with what we've what we have as far as elevation views um, if you name things top and bottom sometimes you'll have a difficult you have difficulty trying to coordinate which elevation you're in fact talking about I would take the naming from what you're given as far as elevations you know you'll have back maybe you would name this one back legs and front legs it just would correspond as you use the elevation views and it's it's pretty important alright so let's go ahead and inset each one of these let's, we're gonna create a constraint I'm gonna use the my align dimension I'm gonna select here and here I'm gonna give myself a dimension I'm gonna lock that select here and here give ourselves a dimension we're going to lock that as well. All right. So now let's go ahead and create one parameter. I'm going to select each one of these constraints that we have right now and we're going to convert them into a parameter and I'm just going to call this parameter inset and click OK and I'm going to come up here and change my table inset to be 4 inches and click apply here and we'll just click OK. Now you'll see our table legs are inset at each corner four inches. So in the next piece is I'm actually going to come down to my right elevation. Now that we've created these reference planes I'm going to go ahead and unhide that form work. 
in our plan view. So now let's go ahead and use, we're going to use our revolve in order to lay out the table legs here. I want to make sure that we use the reference plane properly. So this is where our 3D view becomes handy. I'm going to click on it really quickly and just change this to an axon view using my, my steering cube. But I want to set the work plane that we're going to be using here. So up at the create tab, I come down to, to set for work plane. And because we're going to start right here in our elevation, the right view, I'm going to use this right legs reference plane. And I'm going to click OK here. Now we're working in a view that's parallel to the elevation view we're going to sketch in. And that's just important in laying out the table legs. So I'm going to click our revolve tool. We're going to need our profile and we're going to need an access line. So right now we're selected by default on the boundary line and I'm just going to go ahead and begin to sketch out the profile realizing this reference plane right here is really the center line of our table leg that we're going to revolve around in the end. But I'm going to just come in here and begin to draw the profile that we need here. And maybe we'll give ourselves a profile where we're creating a little bit of a base here. And then I'm just going to come back up and close this. So there we have our closed loop profile. Now we just need to create an access line as well. So I'm going to change this to access line. And I'm actually going to create my access line as long as it's in the same plane. It does not need to intersect. I actually prefer to create that access line above or below the profile. What that allows me to do is as I come back, it may need to edit that. It's not hidden behind the profile in one of my views um, and a little bit more difficult to get to. So now we have our profile and our access line. We have the two items that we need in order to revolve the geometry we're using as our table leg. So I can just click OK. Now you'll see Revit has actually revolved that geometry, that profile, and we have our table leg here. If the thickness of our table leg needs to be greater, which it's a little thin here, I'm just going to click still in this elevation view, and I can actually come up here to edit revolve. going to make this a little bit thicker so I'm going to draw drag this out a little bit tab in and select the entire geometry and I'm just going to move move all of the geometry out to this edge there we go that's that's a little bit better and now I can just click OK and you'll see we have a little bit thicker of a table leg here so now back up in our plan view what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this table leg, come up here to my modify panel, and I'm just going to copy based on that inset work plane, and I'm just going to copy it up here. And then in order to get the table legs on the other end, I'm going to hold down control and select both of these. I'm going to come back up here and I'm just going to mirror about my center line axis. That's going to give us our other two table legs. The next step that's pretty important before we go to flexing this is I'm actually going to select these two table legs. And I'm going to come up here to edit work plane. And you'll see right now it says no, not associated for the name. Well, because we mirrored these objects that were associated with a different work plane and they no longer intersect Revit doesn't have a reference plane for it to be associated with yet so we're just going to now change that to left legs for these and I'm going to click OK that's an important step 
that ensures that as we flex the reference plane, these two legs know which reference plane they're associated with. So just to ensure that this table is working properly, I'm going to come back up here once and I'm going to change my width to 10 feet and I'm going to change my length we'll actually make it a little bit smaller we're going to make it six feet we're going to make our inset and we'll leave the height at four feet and I'm just going to click apply and you'll see that our table actually flexes and the table legs stay in proper relationship to the ends of the table as well. I hope this video has been helpful for you.